Hello everyone and welcome to lecture series of food processing equipment design. Today is our lecture 4 and it is about design of sterilizer and autoglades. So I am Dr. Sandeep Singh Rana, Assistant Professor Food Technology. So today's lecture, the content is about introduction, classification, components of sterilizer then we will see the design procedure of sterilizer. After that, we will design the sterilizer. So, before starting the lecture, we, I am giving some uh, introduction about sterilizers or autoclaves. So, sterilizer or autoclaves are generally one term. So, this is a machine which carry out specific processes at elevated temperature and pressure. So, in a sterilizer or autoclave, we achieve high temperature and pressure. So, the process we carry out in sterilizer or, or an autoclave is sterilization. As we know that, there is a one term pasteurization, another term is sterilization. So, what do you mean by sterilization? Sterilization is killing off all the microorganisms which are present in a food or present in any matrix. What is pasteurization? Whereas the pasteurization is the selective killing of pathogenic microorganisms which are present in the food matrix. So, Mr. Charles Campbell Lang in 1879, who was a French microbiologist, he designed the first sterilizer or autoclave machine. So, but what we do in sterilizer or autoclave, we try to achieve very high temperature and pressures. For example, the typical uh, typical example for the temperature and pressure is 121 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes at either 0.1 or point, either 0.7, 1 or 1.86 kg per centimeter square is the pressure we try to achieve. So, in these conditions, we presume or we assume all the microorganisms are killed in this process. So, this is a typical temperature and pressure combination we generally use in food industry. Okay, why we use then most of the uh, most of the sterilizer are of steam based sterilizer. Okay. So, why we use steam based sterilizer? As we know, the steam is having higher kinetic energy than compared to the other components like uh, when we supply direct heat. Okay, so in the steam, there is a high amount of kinetic energy which will uh, denaturize the protein of microorganism in much faster way. Okay, so next is classification of sterilizer. So generally we classify sterilizer in two types. One is physical sterilizer and next one is chemical sterilizer. So physical sterilizer are sterilizer in which we use heat, filtration, radiation, vibration. So heat sterilizer are either dry heat or moisture. So our steam sterilizer which we are going to design is for under moisture type of sterilizer. So whereas in dry heat we generally pass hot air, like uh, hot air, the ovens, hot air ovens are, can be considered as a dry heat type sterilizer. Next type of is filtration. Filtration type of sterilizers are generally we use in homes like reverse osmosis, like water purifier we are using, that is reverse osmosis sterilizer, okay, in which we use membranes to filter the microbes. So re reverse osmosis is an example. So uh, like uh, ultrafiltration, microfiltration are some examples, but in reverse osmosis we achieve sterilization. Whereas ultrafiltration or microfiltration, we can only achieve pasteurization. So next one is radiation. So radiation type sterilizer are two types: ionization radiation sterilizer or non-ionizing sterilizer. So ionization uh, radiation sterilizer are really ultraviolet like sterilizer okay whereas in non ionizing ionization type sterilizer are uh, like micro uh, sorry uh, 
this electromagnetic wave sterilizer. For example, uh, we are using some microwaves, okay, to sterilize the product. So this type of sterilizer are ultra uh, non-ionizing type sterilizer. So next one is vibrate vibration or vibratory type sterilizer. So for this ultrasonic or uh, supersonic are the best example. Like nowadays we are using ultrasonic. Uh, or sonication technique for sterilization of product. So in, in uh, sonication, what we do? Uh, the vibration occurs when we apply any sonic uh, because of sound waves generated. So you know, inside a particle vibration occurs, which will break down the membrane of the microns and it, hence it uh, dies. So this is type of sterilization which is commonly used in physical type sterilization. The next one is chemical uh, sterilization. It's a chemical sterilization, there are two types. First one is liquid, next one is gas. So liquid sterilizers are the sterilizers which are generally uh, we use formaldehyde or alcohols like alcohol based sterilizer we are using nowadays too much. So these are the liquid type sterilizers. So, Another type is gaseous type sterilizers. So these are the sterilizers which we use for uh, in gaseous form, for like formaldehydes. Okay. So these are formaldehyde is the example of uh, or ethylene oxide is an example of uh, gaseous type sterilizer. So we have seen the type of sterilization uh, process or type of sterilizer which are prominently used in industry. So now the next are the components of the sterilizer. So, we will see the components of the sterilizer. So, sorry, before that we are having another type of sterilizer that is based on the geometry or the based upon the shape. So, pressure cooker is a very much common example for a uh, sterilizer. So, and there are vertical sterilizer or horizontal sterilizer. This is vertical sterilizer which are vertical in shape. Okay, horizontal sterilizer are horizontal in shape. So, or we call it as an autoclave, vertical autoclave, horizontal autoclave, pressure cooker, and in medical industry we use large type of sterilization to sterilize the medical equipment. In food industry, or like we are mostly go for microwave uh, or uh, steam type of sterilization. So, after this, we came to components of sterilization. Before designing any equipment, we should know about the components present inside the uh, sterilizer or in that equipment. So in sterilizer, we are having the so many components. The important one are the lid, pressure vessel, then heating element, lid baskets, and air removal wall. So, if you find out any typical type of sterilizer, these five components should be present. And others are the like uh, monitoring type components, like for example, thermometer, safety valve, pressure gauge, or pressure control valve. So, air pool valve and pressure control valve are one in some types of sterilizer. For example, if you go for pressure cooker, a whistle is there on the top, okay, which works as both. If you remove the whistle, it will work as a air removal valve. But if whistle is there, it will work as a pressure control valve. After a pressure reached a certain threshold, the whistle blows. So that is weight operated weight operated pressure valve. Okay, so these are the one component. So this in many sterilizer, these are the one component, and sometimes these are the two different components. And there is another component, this is perforated trays. Sometimes this is missing. So our grid basket we design like that. Uh, we don't need perforated trays. There are perforation in our grid basket and it will hold the sample. So inside here, we will keep our samples of food made products. So now we are going to design these components. So what are the steps of designing this sterilization or autoclave component. So first one is size of pressure vessel is selected based upon the capacity. So 
तो साइज हाउ टू डिसाइड की डिसाइड प्लेस अपॉन द वॉल्यूम वी विल फिक्स द डायमेंशन फॉर द स्टे लाइक व्हाट इज द डायमेंशन इज फिक्स फिक्स द डायमेंशन वी आर मेजरली गोइंग टू फिक्स इज लेंथ बिकॉज़ द डायमीटर जनरली वी डिजाइन स्टेलाइजर इन सिलेंड्रिकल शेप्स ओके सो हियर वी ओनली फिक्स द लेंथ वेयर इज डायमीटर we consider the assumed diameter according to your convenience okay the next one is we will find out the hoop stress or the longitudinal stress acting inside the component due to the pressure vessel due to the pressure created by the steam so here what we are generally do we generally cal calculate the hoop stress and longitudinal stress which are acting in the pressure vessel also we have seen this type of stresses in pressure vessels as well so after determining the this component or longitudinal stress we compare these components or longitudinal stress with the laboratory values we are getting for the material we have selected okay or the uh, material for uh, we compare it with the material properties okay then we go for the thickness thickness of the this sheet we are going to use or thickness of the pressure vessel we are going to design so this is one of the most important component we are going to design in case of pressure vessel in case of autoclave so once we have decided the thickness then we go about go for laboratory methods which will analyze the quality and based upon that we will fix our like we will do the real experiment with that thickness and we uh, find out whether for that design for that pressure and temperature whether our material or thickness is sustaining or not so next comes fabrication part then once everything is decided we go for fabrication after that we will design the lid of the component like it comes in miscellaneous design so we design the lid of the component like we where we have to uh, give our uh, air using wall where we have to give our safety wall Where what is the position of uh, pressure gauge? Where will be the position of uh, this uh, weight-based uh, air releasing valve? Okay, so we we'll decide where will be the position of thermostat on the lid. So based upon that, we will decide uh, and uh, decide the geometry of the lid and we design the lid. So <coughs> next is <coughs> sorry. So next is water heating. or pressure gauge or safety valve all those things so next is water heating mainly water heater or water heating component we are going to decide where what is the position how much water we are going to store inside it okay how much water we need or steam we need inside our chamber okay based upon that we will fix all these properties and then again we we'll put the safety valve sometimes inside the pressure valve we will design for outlet we will design for inlets okay then next comes the fabrication and we uh, for that performance we will decide whether our machine is working properly or the clay or sterilize is working properly or not so next come how we design in short like how we design an auto clay or sterilize so first one the first is the capacity design in capacity design we will determine the length of the sterilizer which we'll see uh, in next slide So next comes the stresses. There are two types of stresses acting in sterilizer. The first is hoop stress, and second one is longitudinal stress. So hoop stress occur along to the circumference, as we know. So hoop stress will act in this direction, and we denoted it as mu h. And longitudinal stress will occur in this direction. Okay. So longitudinal stress will occur in this direction. So this is mu l or mu l. Okay. So hoop stress occurs in this direction. Longitudinal stress is occur in that direction. So next is wall thickness. What will be the thickness of this wall? Wall thickness of our pressure vessel. So next is miscellaneous design in which we will design for this gas. Uh, Lid basket, and in which we will design for heating setup, heating metal, and in, in which we will design for this lid. Okay, 
this comes under the miscellaneous design. So next is capacity design. Here we will going to design a pressure vessel. So we have seen either it will be horizontal. This is horizontal pressure vessel, and this is vertical type pressure vessel. A vertical type autoclave. So, how we going to design vertical type autoclave or horizontal type autoclave? Here, this is the diameter of the autoclave. So, we denoted it as B. Whereas, in this case, we are having this is the diameter. B. And if you talk about radius, which is D by 2 or R, in both the cases, we will consider it as R. And this is the length. In this case, we can assume it is a height h, and in this case, we will take it as l. This is length. Once we have decided, and then according to the our requirement, we will go for the capacity. Like suppose we are going to design. For 100 kg of capacity of 100 kg load of material. Okay, so suppose our material capacity is 100 kg, we are going to design this sort of clay for 100 kg or x kgs. Okay, then we need to convert this x uh, capacity into volume. How we do that? For example, we are designing for mangoes. Okay. We know the density of mangoes in meter cube, kg per meter cube. Okay. So, how to find out volume? So, we know density is equal to mass by volume. So, from here we will find out volume which is equal to mass by density. So, here we will know the mass. 100 kg uh, means from here we will find out sorry from here we will find out the mass or volume of the our uh, sorry we are going to find out the volume of our uh, <coughs> sterilizer we are going to design for so for example the mass here is we are designing for 100 kg so mass is 100 kg density of mangoes are nearly about 450 to 500 kg per, sorry kg per meter so we keep it here and then we we'll find out the volume we are going to design for volume V in terms of meter Q. So once we we'll get the volume by doing this calculation in background, okay, we will get the volume. Once we we'll get the volume, then we will go to design for that volume. So from that volume we are going to design for dimensions. Dimension we are going to find out is generally length or height okay in case of uh, horizontal silo we find out length whereas in case of vertical silos we find out height so what formula we are going to use is when we are going to design for uh, cylindrical silos so a cylindrical autoclave when our shape is cylindrical, we design it for cylinder, then we use volume of cylinder formula which is equals to pi r square into L in case of uh, horizontal uh, autoclaves, whereas in case of vertical autoclaves it is pi r square h. Okay, when we, we can replace this uh, R with D by 2 if we know the diameter of the autoclave. Okay. In both the cases, we can replace it with, uh, with that. So, our volume is generally in meter cube. So, from here we will find out the volume which we are going to design for. But this is the volume which is needed for our material volume. 400 kg of material. 
So there should be some amount of stream as well. Okay. So for that stream, what we do, we'll multiply, we'll make it, make it as design volume. Okay. We'll consider design volume as 1.5 times of actual volume. Okay. Hence we'll put this one one uh, design volume here in this formula, and from there we'll find out. Design radius, sorry, sorry, radius will be same. Design length and design height of the uh, stay line. Okay. So, height and length of the design stay line. Okay. So, we, what we'll find out, what we'll do, we'll find out the volume and then we'll multiply this volume to with 1.5. Okay. Then we'll go for design volume and we'll keep in these formulas. And from there, we'll find out the length and the height of the sterilizer or the autoplace. Then comes the stress and hoop stress analysis. So these formulas we already know. Hoop stress equals to Td by 2D. And longitudinal stress equals to Td by 4D. Where D is diameter, in this case diameter, P is pressure ex acting inside it, which in terms of megapascals, P in terms of mm, T is the thickness. In terms of mm, and same in other days, in terms of mm, P in terms of mm, P is the pressure in terms of megapascal, and this stress we'll find out. Okay, so after finding out the stress, we will go for our design stress. Okay. How much stress? First, we'll find out how much stress our material can, of particle of particular thickness can achieve. Okay. Then, how to find out the stress exerted by stream inside the pressure vessel? Okay. So we consider water here, correct, or liquid. So there is there is one property of liquid that pressure ex exerted in all the direction will be same. Okay, according to the Pascal law. So, in on each component of water or steam, okay, because we consider it as fluid, so fluid, according to the Pascal law, the pressure will be continuous in all the directions. Okay, or pressure will be equal in all the direction of the autoclave, in all the direction of the structure. Okay, so we know the how much pressure we are going to put we are having on steam so either we we have seen either we designed for 0 0.1 0 0.7 kg per centimeter square of pressure or we designed for 1 or 1.86 correct kg per centimeter square. this we have seen already so we here we assume maximum pressure in case of industry okay in case of food industry the maximum pressure we design for is 5 kg per centimeter square. Okay, we will design generally for this pressure. If this pressure is not given, design pressure is not given, then we assume it is 5 kg per centimeter square. Including all the safety measures, the maximum pressure we design is 5 kg per centimeter square. Okay, whereas in like packaging section or something where we are forcing the air, to get inside, the maximum pressure goes up to 20 kg per centimeter square. Whereas in case of autoclaves, we design for 5 to 10 kg of pressure. So next is wall thickness of or wall thickness design. Where we design the thickness of wall. So what is thickness of wall? The thickness of the our sheet we are using to design the autoclave or sterilizer. So how to find out that? We find out thickness of sterilizer 
by applying the for the maximum stress acting on the surface which is hoop stress which is pd by 2t here we know t which is thickness of uh, outer plate okay so the formula to find out the uh, wall thickness is sigma h hoop stress formula which is p into d by 2 T, okay. So where T equals to P D by two sigma H, correct. So where this is hoops stress acting on the particle. D is diameter, which is this one. D. P is pressure exerting on the surface, which is lateral pressure in this case, or any pressure, a vertical pressure, lateral pressure, are both same in case of steams. But in case of water, we are using, then also it is same. But in case of solid, then it changes. Then comes, we'll find out in mm the thickness of particle. In Pascal, Omega Pascal, whatever, in mm. So this is the formula for thickness because we design uh, the autoclaves based upon the assuming that this we are going to design the thin pressure vessel. Okay, because here the diameter. But thickness ratio is always more than 20. Okay, in case of pressure vessel, the diameter by thickness ratio is always more than 20, which means these are the thin pressure vessels. Okay, so next come in designing the miscellaneous design. So in miscellaneous design, what we do, we design for Grid baskets. Sometimes we put two grid baskets. Sorry, if I for my drawing. These are the grid baskets which are perforated. Okay, which are having holes in so that steam can pass. Okay, and inside grid basket we will keep our sample food material. Okay. Suppose we are sterilizing our fruits. Okay, so inside the grid basket, we'll keep our fruits. So now the thing is, we design each grid basket. Suppose, like how many grid basket we are going going to keep inside our cylinder? Okay, keep inside our uh, autoclave. So suppose in this case, we are going for two grid baskets. Okay. So. If our capacity C is of 100 kg, so size of each grid bas capacity of one grid basket, this is total capacity. So capacity of grid basket will be 100 by 2 based on number of grid basket we are going to design. So, which is equals to 50 kg. So we can assume this capacity as x. So this will be x by n, where n is number of grid baskets we are going to use. Okay, x is the total capacity. Okay. So after that, we are, we know the total capacity how much. Then we'll find out the volume. Okay, it won't be design volume. It will be just the material volume because we are keeping only the material inside. Okay, so here we will use the material dimension. Okay, so we know the length already. Okay, and diameter already. Okay, so we divide it 
volume like that. Okay, so volume will be length. How we'll decide? We'll decide. We will fix the diameter. Okay, so if the our outside diameter is this is outside diameter, which is the consider as D O or D A diameter of autoclave body. Okay, and this D is the diameter of thread basket D G. So another relationship in between D G and D A. So D G equals to point eight times of D A. Okay, this is another relationship we are going to keep. Okay, so next is volume. How how much volume we are going to uh, keep? We will find out the volume based upon formula mass by uh, volume equals to density. So mass we know, density we know. We'll find out the volume of members. Okay. So we'll find out volume of our material. Where volume of our material here. So formula we will use for volume is pi d g upon two pi r square. Correct into length. Here we will find out the length of bread basket, which is D G. Okay, so this is the volume of one bread basket. What is the volume of next bread basket? Okay, so next one is heating or set, uh, design of heating setup. So as we know, this much area we need to design heating setup. Okay. In which our heating mantle and water will come. So for designing, we should keep some length. This is the height or length L for the autoclave. So we keep it as 0.2 times of x. So the new length, the total length will be, a total height will be. Point two of design length, which is point plus length. Okay, so point two HD plus HD. Okay, or one point two times of HD. One point two times of. Okay. Next comes the lid design. In lid design, we will design for lid geometry. Okay, where we will fix the design of where we we should have thermostat. Where should we have gas valve? Where we should have safety wall, and where we should have pressure wall. Okay. Okay. We will design for this, and the thickness for lid is always the thickness of the pressure vessel. So this is how we are going to design the components for. Uh, miscellaneous components for the uh, pressure vessel. So let me highlight the important formulas which we are going to use. So first, we'll find out the capacity. Okay, how to find out the capacity? Which is equal to total capacity upon the number of baskets. It is the capacity of each grid basket. Then we will find out the diameter of the grid basket, which, which is dg. dg equals to the 0.8 times of actual grid basket, actual diameter of the pressure vessel, okay, or the autoclave. Then comes the volume of each grid basket, okay. Based on this formula, we will find out the length of each grid 
basket. Okay, L. LG. So once we have designed the grid basket, which should be perforated, we made hole into it, okay, so that it will hold our samples. And it will let pass the steam. And what then we'll design for the length of the autoclave. Okay. Length of the autoclave will uh, previously we haven't considered the length for uh, this steam or water inlets, okay, or steam inlets. If we are providing heating steam from outside, okay, instead of within the basin, then we will go for the previous length. But if our steam component or water component is attached with the autoclave, then the new length will be 0.2 times of L. Generally, our steam length is like autoclave, we will fill water into it, okay, so water will be inside. Okay, to accommodate that extra water, we should increase the length of the uh, length of our auto grid, okay, which is 1.2 times of designed length, which we have seen in previous figure, <coughs> previous slide. So next come the, or in case we are designing for vertical uh, auto play, so we consider it HT, which is equals to 1.2 times of H. D, which is design type. So next we will design the geometry of lid, okay, or the lid we are having. So lid should have the same thickness of our thickness of our material. Here the point we have to consider, we should provide the provision for pressure case, safety wall, thermostats or other safe, other components we are going to attach it to it basket. So thank you for today. So we will, in next class, we will design some pressure and some uh, pulpers which are used in food industry for crushing and pulping of fruit juice. Uh, majorly those are the components which we use in uh, juice industries. Okay, so we will design that part and after that our unit one will finish. Thank you. We will meet for next lecture.